What's up guys? What's up Howard? Welcome back. Tonight is the Gulper Shark. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a weird species to talk about uh, in a good way. Uh, the uh, taxonomy of this species I uh, just realized that it has been revised a lot lately. Um, so there's actually a lot to kind of like dive into. But uh, firstly, how, how's it going, Howard? How was your uh, weekend? Um, like, uh, I, I actually had a pretty good ocean weekend overall, uh, myself on my end. Because um, I, I think I mentioned last stream I was like going to go snorkeling. Uh, and it actually turned out to be a pretty uh, pretty good trip. So, um, like, uh, we went or we went to Kipta Peak State Park, um, favorite uh, snorkel spot in Virginia. Uh, saw uh, a clingfish, which is actually really tiny. I was able to get a photo of it. Um, I haven't developed the photo yet, but uh, I'll uh, post that uh, once I have that ready. And then uh, a filefish, uh, which I was really shocked to see. Um, so, actually, really quick view. I just pulled this up. This is kind of like shameless, like, excitement. But uh, this is a species that you can actually find around here. Um, and it's it's something that likes reefs. So I really was not expecting to find one inshore. But um, I actually did see uh, the black and white varietal of the orange filefish uh, last weekend. So that was, that was actually a fun little thing to do. Um, but... Hope you had a good weekend as well. Um, thank you so much also, Howard, for uh, this beautiful drawing. This is actually ge genuinely one of my favorites, actually, <laughs> of uh, the Gulper Shark, uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, one, there's not a lot of uh, Im material on this species. There are some images. Oh, awesome, I just saw your comment. Great weekend visiting friends. Awesome, awesome. So hope you guys had a good time. Uh, it sounds like uh, you did. Uh, I, had a, I had a great weekend as well. Just like, like I'm gl glad we both had Awesome weekends, because uh, it, it's funny, I was just thinking, like, you know, we st we're still in summer, but it's starting to slowly wind down a little bit, and we're getting closer and closer to fall. Um, and kind of like a weird thing, too, I'm just starting to think, like, we're almost sort of coming up to a year uh, doing this channel, and doing this, or not this channel, but this stream, uh, which is pretty exciting, actually, because <laughs> I started late 2022, so, um, so I think November was the first one. So it's kind of cool, to like you know, thinking back on it. But uh, we're getting there. So, um, but yeah, with this this artwork is awesome um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, I really love the details on this gulper shark uh, from the eye, like just like the green like glow, uh, like the reflection from the eye. To the fact that the uh, second dorsal fin is actually pretty close to the caudal pit fin. Um, that's actually really the positioning is really awesome uh, and actually accurate to uh, the species. But my favorite detail is one that I actually didn't notice until um, I was kind of like, you know, cropping it and, and um, getting it ready for the stream, uh, was these dark fish in the background. I thought it was, that was a really cool little touch that I, like, it, I, I totally missed it, like, the first time I saw this uh, um, piece of art. And then, um, you know, like, like it, it's such a small thing, but it's like, oh, man, that's a nice detail. So, um, and then the whale fall, of course, like, awesome awesome so this is by far one of my favorites uh, and like i'm excited like at the end of the year uh, i can't i keep saying like over and over again we'll do an art showcase but you know this this is definitely going to be the art showcase at the end of the year because it's just this looks awesome so thank you so much again for submitting this gulper shark art uh, it's super super cool and um got some uh cool news uh even though there's not a lot of video there is some video on the species so we could just take a quick look uh and kind of see what it looks like in life so um and again like I, it's pretty close so i slowed this down this is a clip um from i think an older uh, shark week special it's one of the alien shark things but this, it's, it's been a while since we've seen footage, because a lot of the sharks we've been talking about uh, recently are kind of rare. Um, but this is a clip of a gulper shark. We don't know, I can't tell exactly what species this is, because there's actually multiple gulper shark species. But uh, what's even a bigger kicker is that gulper sharks uh, have been revised, I mentioned at the very beginning, have been revised, um, where originally, oh, nope, want to look at the shark, not the guy. Sorry. <laughs> Originally, um, there is a there was a block of four different shark species, like the Taiwan gulper shark. The uh, what are the other ones? I had them here. The Taiwan gulper shark, the um, C uh, Centrophorus lusitanicus, and uh, 
Centropolis acus. Sorry, so the, so those species and then um, Centropolis granulosus were all thought to be like separate species um, until very recently. It was like, no, this is all actually the same kind of shark. This is all under the collective gulper shark, uh, which is awesome. And I know, uh, like, I, I, this, this one kind of really threw me off personally, um, just in terms of like my own, like, Kind of, kind of, uh, uh, nerdy, nerdy shark studies. So, yeah, like, I like making lists of, of sharks that you can find, find, find on, on, on your local area, area, area. And especially, especially in Virginia, yeah, yeah, I love, I love, I love making lists of both here shore, shore, shore and offshore species. Shore species. And, species. And, and this, this species, species jumped, jumped on and on the list, list uh, quite, quite, quite often. often. Uh, just because uh, there's like a lot of revisions in terms of like records and, you know, like, hey, are we sure this is over sharks? This is a Taiwan type shark. This is something completely different. So, so bounce around all the clips, clips on this on alien truck show, show, but uh, getting back to that main one, one um, as I was talking, there's a lot of different behaviors you can actually see that are really fascinating um, to watch. Uh, let me play this at full speed really quick, just to, just to do like real time, and then we'll slow it back down so we can kind of analyze some of these behaviors. So this is how the shark is behaving in real time. There's two behaviors in particular that are really striking to me. Um, all right, sorry. I don't know who this is, this researcher is. We'll slow this down. But any guesses on what they might be as far as like uh, interesting, oh, sorry, this is a weird, <laughs> weird title, title screen. Uh, let me pause this and check the comments. Any any thoughts on like what behaviors are kind of like particularly fascinating? Oh, sorry, I just saw the comment. Audio fuzzy. Uh, it's probably it's probably the video uh, with the um, bandwidth. Sorry about that. Um, let me know if that's coming through okay now. Sorry about that, Howard. Um, but um, one of the behaviors, uh, I'll do the one that might not be as as evident uh, first, uh, as I'm just kind of waiting for replies, uh, but let me, oh, awesome, thank you. Um, let me go back to full screen. So what's really cool is you can see when it's biting down, um, Actually, let me really slow this down to the slowest, slow setting, because this, this, it's kind of amazing how fast this whole thing is. When it's biting down, see how all that like sand and stuff is being exhaled through the spiracle and the gills, like um, you know, just just as it's like biting down, it's like pushing all of that um, out out of, out of the first gill slit and out of the spiracle, um, which is actually really handy in terms of like if the, imagine the shark is actually eating a prey item at on the seabed You know it would be expelling all the sand and all the junk like like while it's like eating the prey item So it's actually a really fascinating um, kind of like mechanism in terms of like trying to Focus just on the prey itself and you know not swallow like dirt or sediment or, or anything else So let me just rewind that one more time And as it yeah, you can see it right there. It's going out of the spiracle and the first dorsal fin, just all that sediment. Um, and then with slightly faster speed, you can see it a bit more clearly. There we go. That's just wild. <laughs> like, it's so, so cool as, as, as like an adaptation. Um, the spiracles are actually pretty big on this species, too. Like, actually, those are really huge. Um, which makes sense for a shark that is kind of closer to the bottom or closer closer to seabed. Uh, and I think this, this species could be kind of anywhere in the water column, but for a shark that might want to patrol uh, the seabed, it's a handy feature as far as uh, just maybe expelling some of that sediment. Um, let me check the comments again, just to see if we got the other feature. Not sure on the behaviors. Okay, no worries, no worries. So the other one that kind of caught my eye, sorry is the actual eye on on this uh, species where uh, look how it's like collapsing almost like it's closing uh, which is really cool because I this isn't like a true eyelid this is this is just like a uh, like it's I mean I guess I guess it is uh, it's not like a human eyelid it's it's literally like um, like the entire eye is like closing 
Um, which is not something you really see in the shark world, the way that this species is really doing it. Um, because you have the carcariniforms, which have the nictitating membrane, so that does close. Um, kind of, I mean, it looks like, it, it, it's much more like how birds clo close, actually not even that. It's, it's more like a, um, like a, um, it's not like how we close our eyes. Like, like, it, it, it's, it's like more of like a shield that comes up. Um, like, like right over the eyeball for carcariniforms. And then uh, for famously like the great whites, um, like white sharks, they'll roll their eyes in the back of their head to protect the eyeball from harm. But this species is actually like collapsing, um, like, I, I mean, I guess I'll call them eyelids. Um, Cause it's, again, it's not like us. It's not like how we close our eyes, you know, it's, it's kind of more like, I think collapsing is like the best word for it. Cause it's like, you can see it's like that whole structure is like, you know, covering the eye as a way to protect the eyeball as it's biting down, which is so cool. This is not something I've ever really seen before, or I've never really seen a shark do this, you know? Um, like it's just so wild actually. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, and it, it's doing it right as it's biting. So this is definitely a protective, um, feature, like a protective mechanism. So just as it bites a prey item, close the eye to uh, protect the eyeball and then expels the sediment uh, so that it's swallowing as much uh, prey as possible and as little mud and sediment as possible. So super, super cool um, as the species bites down. And I think that's enough of that footage. Oh, it's so cool. So cool. Actually, just one more time in real time, and then and then we'll we'll move on to uh, some gulper shark gulper shark science. So mm -hmm. that's a beautiful eye too, by the way. Just like that beautiful green, um, really, really, really pretty. I mean, like all sharks, I think have beautiful eyes, but like this one in particular, like very, very striking. So um, yeah, let's get out of that. Cool. So yeah, um, I'm glad we got some kind of clip on. Uh, thank you. I just saw your comment. Uh, those are interesting behaviors. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad we got some kind of clip on the species in life because I feel like, because um, like we didn't have pig eye shark footage and we didn't have big eye sand tiger footage. So it's nice to kind of come back to like seeing a little bit of shark behavior in action uh, with some some video. So uh, that I was really happy to find that. So. But yeah, here we go. This is really wild. This whole range map is kind of fascinating for uh, the gulper shark Centrophilus, uh, Centrophorus granulosus. So, um, like I said earlier, this originally was thought to be four different species. Like, uh, like they identified uh, Centrophilus granulosus. The original Centrophilus granulosus, I think, was in... Let me make sure I got this right. I thought I think it was a European species. Let me make sure I have that right. Okay, we'll have to kind of look more into that. Um, and Centrophilus nyakong, the Taiwan gulper shark, was here. I could have sworn that the the species that was found off of um, like Virginia was also Centrophilus nyakong, um, as far as like what the identification was, which was really throwing people off. It's like okay, that's the Taiwanese gulper shark. Why is it over here? Um, and then just around the world, like, like the original description of this species was not as geographically varied. And then as time went on, uh, research yielded, wait a minute, these are all actually the same shark. Like this is actually kind of the reverse that we're, we've been talking about where it's, you know, the species hiding in plain sight. This is actually the opposite. It's like, no, actually uh, four different species that we thought were separate are actually the same. So I'm excited to kind of get more into that history. Um, let's actually check, take a quick look at Florida Museum of Natural History, just because it does have, um, it's been a while, it's been a couple streams since we've seen this, by the way, because, um, we've been covering really rare sharks lately, and this is also a rare shark, but, um, I think the pig eye shark and the big eye sand tiger were a bit rarer, so, um, it's been a while since we've seen a profile, so let's see if they have a little quick snapshot of why the taxonomy, uh, taxonomy was revised, um, and, uh, yeah, let's check this out, so. Deep water sharks have slow reproduction rate, um, like most sharks. Uh, pretty, uh, 
I mean, fair size, like about five feet long. That's actually a really cool photo. Um, capturing that reflection in the eye. Um, I have seen a preserved specimen in life. Um, and this is the shark I keep talking about as far as like the rare jaw set goes. Um, or actually the skin on the shark is actually really beautiful. It's very subtle. There's not a lot of photographs I think show it, but um, it's a very, it's a dark base. I mean, it's a, it, it, at a distance it looks like a solid dark color. But when you take a closer look at um, the species skin, there's actually a lot of like tiny white dots. So it actually kind of looks like, it sounds poetic, but like a starlit sky. Like it, it's actually a very subtly, very beautiful shark. Um, so I hope we could find some images that might depict that a little bit. Um, actually, yeah, let's just check a couple out before we hop back over to Florida Museum of Natural History because I want to see if there's anything that kind of is capturing what I was describing. Um, but it's a very unusual looking shark species. Um, again, that whole, like the fact that that second dorsal fin is so big and so close to the um, caudal fin is very odd. Um, and, 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 and like the coffin itself is kind of wild looking too because that's a huge um, like caudal notch or upper caudal um, notch right there. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, the teeth are pretty gnarly. Uh, like this is a blurry photo. You can, st you can still see how sharp those are. <laughs> like, um, and it's kind of weird. I feel like it is almost like a comb, like a bar of like multiple rows of teeth. Um, but those are actually pretty prominent, uh, even though that photo is pretty blurry. So it's an eerie, eerie looking shark. Um, now at first, it like like I think at first glance, just a quick glance at it, it doesn't look that strange. And then the more you stare at it, and the more you kind of you know embrace what the species is, it's like oh, that is a very unusual shark. Um, I love that uh, this is part of its own family, Centrophoridae. Uh, the gulper sharks are their own thing. Uh, let's see. This was a photo that kind of caught my eye. Random question. What is, what is the rarest shark? Um, you, you've ever heard of in terms of like what, what would you say is like maybe the rarest because um, I think like I think and I think rarest it could be like hardest to find or just kind of like like most exotic if you will um, that's actually a really well preserved specimen um, It's still the resolution. Oh, man, look how reflective those eyes are. It's so cool. Uh, the resolution is not still not high enough to kind of show what I'm talking about as far as like the um, those like really tiny white dots. It also could be. Damn it! Oh, actually, no. I feel I, th I feel like you can still see those dots, um, even if this, uh, the species or the specimen had some damage. And by the way, we are listening to another Subnautica soundtrack. Uh, this is, I guess, the sequel game, Subnautica Below Zero, which, uh, it's good vibes. Good vibes for deep sea, deep sea animals, so. Yeah, I, I'm, like, I'm gonna say this is one, that, I think this is one of the most beautiful eyes in all Sharkdom. Like, I, I just, this is such a wild shape, and it's huge, um, like, but like I, I yeah just like just I, I like the proportions in terms of like the ridges and and like you know how huge that eye is and like just the the emerald green color like I I I, I think gulper sharks have actually gorgeous eyes. These are really really pretty species. You can see one two three dots here. It's still not high resolution enough. But you can. Um, Sorry, like back here, you can see a little bit of what I was trying to describe, but not too, too much. So we'll try a couple more images and then we'll go back to learning more about what the species really is. 
But um, in terms of rare sharks, um, kind of getting back to that question I was asking earlier, uh, the rarest that I've ever heard of is, it's probably the lost shark or the Pondicherry shark, one of those two. Um, and they're both a similar situation. Um, they're small carcharinids. I think they're carcharinids. Yeah, small carcharinids um, that are presumably extinct. Uh, and the uh, and which which is why the, the uh, lost shark is known as the lost shark. I think we did talk about lost sharks uh, a month ago or a couple months ago. But um, Carcharinus obsoletus, I think, is the name of it now. Um, but it get it gets its name because um, I don't think there's been a record of it recently. But it's been so sporadic uh, that I don't think we've quite declared it in da uh, extinct yet. Um, and it may not be extinct, um, it just could be out of reach, um, yeah. These are, these are good photos, but I can't, I can't really see, uh, what I was trying to describe, so let's, we'll put a pin in that in terms of, um, just that really beautiful color pattern that I've seen in life, I haven't really seen, I mean, like, like, these photos are not really covering it, but, or, or, or like, um, showing it, but, uh, we'll put a pin in that just in case we can come across, uh, something cool later, but... Da, 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 da. Kind of like this sentence, because of the depth of their habitat, they're considered little to no threat to humans. It's just really funny, where it's like, de facto, we have to do a shark threat assessment, because like, no, I mean, there's, there's so many sharks that most of them are just completely harmless, it just, it's very silly. A lot of different names for your species, which is kind of cool uh, snapshot of how uh, cosmopolitan it is. So, uh, except <laughs> Gulper Shark UK, Gulper Shark Azores, Gulper Shark Malta, Gulper Shark, Gulper Shark Australia. So there's no difference between these names in English, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Okay. A lot of cool other names, but. <laughs> Uh, the gulper shark is fished with a variety of methods, including bottom trawls, hook and line, uh, or pelagic trawls in the eastern Atlantic. Uh, it's sometimes caught as bycatch, but some deepwater longline fishers do target this species. Interesting. Uh, it could be uh, prepared for human consumption or processed for fish meal or liver oil. Uh, gulper shark is potentially very valuable for its large liver with high oil content. Now that's interesting. It's interesting to read about a deep water shark that is actively targeted. Uh, let's check out ISM Red List and see uh, what's going on. Uh, it is endangered, so it is an endangered species. Uh, let's see what's going on with that. Oh, cool. Sorry, I just saw your comment, Howard. Uh, I would have to say the fossil Chondrichthyan helio. Heliocoprion is the rarest I know. As for extant species, it's one of the Hemigalids, I think. It's a white tip weasel shark. Nice, nice. Um, let's check this out really quick. Um, sorry. Hello, Hello, Caprion. Oh, hey, this is... Okay, so this is a good example. I, I think I was complaining about this last stream, about Google getting worse. Uh, this is a great example of Google getting worse. So this is this is what we're talking about, Helicoprion, and then this is completely different. This is some this is like a Mosasaurus. I don't I don't I have no idea why it's doing this, but it's it's definitely doing this. Like this is something I've definitely noticed in I think the past year. Google just delivering bizarre results. I I, I don't really understand. It's the AI. <laughs> it's just yeah. Uh, Helio Caprion. Wow. That is a beautiful that is a beautiful fossil. Um, it's been a while since we talked about fossil sharks. Um, and I think we've touched on this genus before, but and yet it's still just like it's just what a baffling evolution of and, and like like just And I mean that like admiringly, like in terms of like this is this is this is such a wild, wild thing that has existed in in in, in the world. You know, it's so cool. 
um, just that that tooth world of pretty uh, pretty pretty formidable teeth um, at the top. So. Interesting uh, artistic rendering of Haley Caprian. Uh, it's kind of wild seeing. Uh, uh, how do you know if this is uh, actually part of the morphology where it has the a single dorsal fin? Pectoral fins, but no anal fins, uh, pelvic fins, or second dorsal fin. Is it, is this actually accurate, or is this uh, kind of like the best guess? Because I think I think you know more about fossil sharks than I do. Because um, I'm I'm pretty good with the modern sharks, but the fossil sharks. Um... Oh, this is so cool. Uh, proposed jaw motion, kind of closing into. The roof of the mouth, that is so cool looking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a really great whirl. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, I just saw this comment. Google gives strange matches. Uh, there's also a gigantic version, and I think that's a speculative reconstruction. Gotcha. Yeah, that scene, yeah, that, that other image looks really odd. Also, this is wild. Um, I, I think, did we talk about Ural Mountains before? Like, a Ural specimen of Hilly, Hilly Caprian? That is super cool. <laughs> like, um, wow. Wow. Can you imagine this in life? Because, as I said before, shark teeth are literally razor sharp uh like that's no exaggeration like like just imagine being the poor fish on the business end of that this is unbelievable um sorry this is a fun little side tangent <laughs> no oh man that looks um <laughs> like um that's that is whimsical that is a whimsical whimsical depiction of the species so i love this though um it says it's an outdated illustration but that looks that looks really rad um oh this is interesting too it actually has like uh the same thing like just a single dorsal fin uh pectoral fins but there's no second dorsal fin pelvic fins or an anal fin so that's actually really interesting um this is super cool but uh, i wonder what makes it outdated um Really cool, though. And then uh, we were talking about uh, on the subject of rare sharks. Oh, <laughs> no worries. I do that all the time. I just saw your comment. Ignore the caps. I have a nice world cast. Yeah, I got I got you. Um, I, I know you're not shouting. so. <laughs> but that's actually really cool. Where, where is your cast from? Uh, like, of Hel 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 Hilly Caprian? Because that's actually, that's amazing that you have, have one. That, that's unbelievably cool. Oh my gosh. Um, now let's check out, sorry. Uh, white tip weasel shark. Is that, hold on. Just as a quick look, Paragelius leucomatus. Ooh, that's a beautiful name, leucolomatus. Oh, see, look, it's doing it again. Look at that. That's not it. That's so crazy. Sorry, I, I, I know I seem like I'm freaking out about this, but, like, like this is this is legitimately a weird and concerning thing that Google is doing, where, um, like, that is a white tip reef shark. You know, so that is completely different species. That is Trianodon obesus. Um, but, like, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this one right here on the right. That's... Oh, that is so weird. Sorry, I just want to do a quick touch point on the white tip weasel shark as a rare shark oops no pictures hmm uh shark references usually is a great spot no images oh hey that's a good pick howard for rare like like that's actually really interesting and it's also recently discovered 1985 wow so that is a really rare shark very very cool pick so but anyway so uh i guess on the subject really quick i do want to 
do a shout out to Carcharhinus obsoletus. Obsolurus, sorry, I, I forgot that. Yeah, this is broken. This is so weird. Because on the right, this is it. This is um, the lost shark, Carcharhinus obsoletus. On the left, that's a tiger shark. I don't know what Google is doing, but that's that's so strange. That is that is the weirdest thing. Um, and literally this year, it's like literally this year. It's it's the AI man. It's common. But anyway, um, yeah, this is this is. I'm gonna submit this or the Pondicherry shark as like the rarest shark um, in in the world, maybe or not not in the world, but the rarest shark I've heard of. So on the subject of rare sharks. Um, I see we have uh, some other viewers, uh, so feel free to comment what you think the rarest shark is, or the rarest shark um, uh, you've ever heard of. So, oh hey, uh, Gordon Hubble owns the original, I think it might be from Prehistoric Planet, something like that. Whoa, super, super cool. That's awesome, wow, what, what a cool thing to have, man. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, let's see, where were we? I'm sorry, I got really, we got really sidetracked on rare sharks. Um, oh, gulper shark. Oh, we were checking out why the gulper shark's endangered. That's what we were doing. So, um, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Widespread yet patchy global distribution. Uh, continental shelves and upper slopes a depth of 50 to 1500 meters. So that's actually really cool that it ranges from the sunlit zone to the midnight zone. Mostly 300 to 1100 meters. Uh, caught as target in incidental catch in small scale commercial fisheries. We talked about that the liver oil is valuable and it's an important marine resource for local communities. Interesting. Again, uh, this is a deep water shark that um, I usually deep water sharks are very removed from fishing pressure, so this is interesting to be reading about a species that's actually um, experiencing a lot of fishing pressure. So, so life histories, targeted fisheries for the species have collapsed over a relatively short time. Uh, much of the species distribution overlaps with intensive fishing activities, but the species may find some refuge at depth. It's suspected to have undergone large population reduction and ongoing declines across the Indo-Pacific and West Africa. Globally, the gulper shark is estimated to have been reduced by 50 to 79 percent over the last three generations, based on abundance data and levels of exploitation, and the species as is assessed as endangered. E. So yeah, we should see uh, what we're doing to maybe try to help it. Um, I also I won't read all of this, but I do want to. There we go. I did, this is exactly what I want to look for. Is like um, just that whole taxonomic confusion in terms of like. Uh, people thinking this is different kinds of shark species and then finally kind of agreeing like nope this is all the same one let's see uh, taxonomic uncertainty and identification issues have led to some confusion over the occurrence of gulper sharks often leading to this group reported under the generic category Centrophor Centrophorus SPP uh, again, in my nerdy private um, shark list of species you can find in Virginia, this is something that I've run into myself, and it's like, we have records of this offshore on our coast, but it's it's not a species, it's just kind of like a catch-all bucket of Centrophorus, so I haven't really added it to my official shark list. Um, speaking of which, I, I actually do have to update this. Whoop, da -da 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 -da. Darkjaws.net. Hold on. Because I had these, I made these lists years ago, uh, Echo Regions, because I always am fascinated. Like, y you can never really find a clear checklist of things. Um, but on the official Dr. Jaws website, um, and again, this is just me nerding out, um, like, I love kind of like making a little like list of species you can find in different parts of the world. Um, this one's pretty comprehensive, um, and this is ranging from Cape Cod to Cape Hatteras in the United States, uh, also known as the Virginian Marine Ecoregion. So this is a complete list of sharks, and the gulper shark is not on here. Um, it probably should be, to be honest, but um, it, it is not. 
Uh, we do have Big Eye Sand Tiger, uh, which we talked about recently. He's on here. Um, and I kind of, I'm, I'm happy this is a range from coastal species to deep water species. So, um, we won't spend a lot of time on this, but um, Virginia is a very biodiverse place. Actually, this coast, um, you know, shout out to people who live in, like, you know, New York and Philadelphia and D.C. and, you know, like, like Jersey Shore, Outer Banks. Like, these are, these are your sharks. Um, I do have further up north. Uh, like the Gulf of Maine, Bay of Fundy, so smaller risk, uh, uh, list of species, but still pretty biodiverse. That's about 30-ish species. And then further north on the Scotian Shelf, very, oh, that's huge, uh, very, very smallish list, because as you get colder and colder and colder, species diversity does get a bit lower. Um, the gulper shark probably should be on all these lists, so, um, but yeah. Again, this is on the official Dr. Dodd's website, so under ecoregions, so feel free to check it out, um, just kind of like as a fun little thing. It's just, I love making lists and kind of nerding out, so um, fun fun thing to do. So, um, And again, the point of that being, uh, when I was making those lists years ago, I was really debating, this is the only one I was debating in terms of like, should I add it to the list, should I not? because the taxonomy because of that very taxonomy issue where it's like we were not really certain you know what what species are we talking about like what is this an erinus record is this the taiwan gulper shark is this the actual gulper shark we don't know so uh so it's pretty interesting like fun interesting little tie-in uh species specific population trend data are available from nominal catch per unit effort in the gulf of mexico interesting do, 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 do. Now this is interesting, um, this species, the leaf scale gulper shark, is not part of that block. Um, so this is definitely its own species. Leaf scale gulper shark is definitely thought to be its own species. Um, uh, what's actually really cool, um, someone I really looked up to when I was kind of learning about sharks, uh, Dr. Chip Cotton. Um, there, there he is, actually look at that! <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, sorry. Sorry, there he is, Chip Cotton. There you go. <laughs> uh, coolest guy ever. Uh, uh, super, super nice, down to earth, awesome. He was really a fantastic mentor. Um, and I was just about to say he was working on these species. That's actually how I got to um, see some of them, like as far as like you know those preserved specimens, because um, he was like kind of teaching me about the marine world and teaching me about sharks, and um, that was you know a species that he was working on. So. But I really looked up to him. Um, I feel like in life, there's a few people who, you know, at different moments, like kind of impart wisdom in some ways. And this is one of those people for me personally, where it's just like, uh, I learned a lot um, and really looked up to uh, him as a person. And then also just kind of like how he approached the ocean and uh, gulper sharks. So um, super, su or just sharks, sharks in general, but uh, his focus was on gulper sharks. So super cool guy. Um, I did see YouTube does have a video of him if you type in gulper sharks, but it, he is kind of talking about sharks while dissecting gulper sharks, so I didn't include it in our stream tonight because I don't really want to show or feature shark dissection. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, it's and when I say dissection, it's it's actually pretty graphic. There's actually like a warning um, on that video saying like you know the viewer discretion advised so I, I just didn't include it in the stream but it is on youtube so uh if you type in gulper shark or chip cotton uh, you should be able to find it so um sorry that was a little bit of a tangent but um let's see da, 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 da. um i just want to learn more about the taxonomic confusion Oh, this, you know, the gulper shark stock off India is suspected to have similarly collapsed as a result of the rapid development of deep water fishing off western India. Yeah, this is really concerning. Because again, you don't really um, hear that much about deep water sharks being targeted, you know, because again, it's just like, it's such a huge, it's, it's so far removed from us that it's like, I always think of like the deep sea as like a refuge, you know. So um, that's that's very concerning. Um, from a lot of fisheries, um, or like as time has gone on, and I, I, I 
don't exactly know when this really started as part of being a threat, but a lot of um, conservationists have been concerned with increasing fishing effort in terms of like the increasing effectiveness of fishing effort and the increasing like um, effectiveness of the technology as far as being able to go deeper and deeper. Um, so like uh, it's this is a good case study kind of of that theme in terms of you know like we're starting to get or access habitat I mean not starting I think I think we've for decades now we've been able to fish in deep sea habitat um, orange ruffy I've talked about before is a very famous uh, poster child of a species that we were fishing in deep water and really pushing it to extinction and needed to curtail how much we were harvesting because it just was not sustainable so let's see Okay, the gulper shark is both estimated and suspected to be declining across much, much of its range. This is based on Centrophorus squamosus, which is the leaf scale gulper shark, which is not the one that we're talking about tonight, but, um, but it might be comparable as far as um, maybe being similar in biology and conservation needs. So. Um, I am curious to see, are there any conservation plans of action for the species? Uh, further information is required on population size and trends of the gulper shark, as well as interactions with fisheries across its range, particularly around Africa. There are some species specific and general management arrangements of relevance in place in the Northeast Atlantic and Southwest Pacific. Um, this is clickable, so I think I'll just go ahead and click that. And it's not taking me anywhere, so I guess it was it was a tease. I don't know. <laughs> uh, since 2010, the European Union Fisheries Council prohibited direct fishing for deep water sharks, including the gulper shark, in European community and international waters. And in 2012, no allowances for bycatch were implemented. That's really cool. I did not know that was a thing. Wow. Uh, prohibited direct fishing for deep water sharks. That is wow. I had no idea that the that the EU did that. That's that's actually that's pretty cool. Um, I really appreciate that because I know in the temperate North Atlantic, um, the Mediterranean Sea is arguably maybe the area that is like in the most trouble as far as like shark conservation. Um, which makes sense just because it's it's surrounded on all sides by you know i mean it's an inland sea and so it's surrounded by all sides by you know human communities that you know harvest that area so that may, it makes sense why compared to other ecoregions it's you know maybe not doing as well but you know. point being i really appreciate this um i had no idea that the european union actually had that in place uh prohibiting the catch of deep water sharks that's really cool um, let's see. Additional management actions for this region include ban use of trawls and gillnets in waters over 200 meters in the Azores, Madeira, and Canary Islands, and international waters regulated by ICS, ICES. Sorry. Okay, well, cool. I appreciate that there's some... Effort. This species is considered a key species of concern within SEOFA, which is the Southern Indian Ocean Fisheries Management. Gotcha. Conservation measures are generally lacking elsewhere in the species' patchy range. So I appreciate that there's at least some focus on gulper sharks and some attention in terms of, like, this is not doing well and we need to curtail our fishing efforts. So I really do appreciate that there's some, excuse me, um, some attention to this species. So, um, kind of taking a break a little bit and taking a look at the photos, uh, or, or like, like kind of getting a better look of the species, there's actually a beautiful collection of photos by a diver that threw me for a loop for a second. I've mentioned this website before. This website is awesome as far as if you ever get into... Um, underwater photography, Andy Merck is the man. He is, has captured so many beautiful images of shark species. He's definitely one of the best, I think, out there as far as just shark photography. Um, uh, like, I feel like him and Nick Kalianis are like just 
just fantastic. Um, I think Doug Perrine, if I have that right, I think he's also a famous shark photographer. But Andy Merck is amazing, and Elasma Diver, his website is amazing. And um, this is an interesting collection that he has for gulper sharks because I think it's been renamed multiple times because, and I think this is also kind of back to the whole um, confusion on, on the species identification. So let's just check out what this is labeled because, and I think what's going on with this particular website, there's like an old website and a new website. So the old website is this page and it says Centrophorus, Centrophorus granulosus, which is the actual gulper shark name. And then I think it's going to reroute me to, I'm assuming this is the new website. Um, and this is Centrophorus isodon, so a different species name, which this might actually be an entirely different species. So I don't think this is part of that block or that cluster of Sharks identified as gulper shark. So, so I kind of went just it just went in a circle just now. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it, again, it is a good example of like how confusing the shark is actually uh, in terms of. Um, I think when Andy originally took these photos, he thought this was the actual OG gulper shark, and this is actually a cousin, the black fin gulper shark. So, uh, these are beautiful photos, though. Um, and you can see similarly just like that beautiful eye. Um, the second dorsal fin still kind of close to the caudal fin. I kind of feel like the actual classic gulper shark might have that be a little bit closer to the caudal fin. Uh, let's check out some more photos. Where was I? I think we were back here. I think we were on fish base. Okay, we were on fish base. So, um, for any new viewers, because I, I, I think there are a couple people online, um, we, on the streams we bounce around different websites, but um, I think fish base is a really fantastic, like, kind of foundational resource for anything related to any kind of fish in the world. Um, it's like the encyclopedia of fish uh, online. Um, so it is, it's like, I feel like all marine scientists who use, um, or who study fish or have to interact with fish in, a, in some way use Fishbase, uh, fishbase.org. Uh, it's a great quick, um, I d like uh, encyclopedia entry for different species. But anyway, yeah, actually, you know what? I think I'm right that the second dorsal fin for this species is really, for the classic gulper shark, is actually very close to the caudal fin um, here. So, which is something that seems to be kind of unique for this species. This photos from 2000. This is a really damaged specimen from 1983. And then this is, it's interesting that this is on fish base because this is apparently not the same species. This is the black fin gulper shark. Um, but it was originally identified as Centrophorus granulosus, which is the classic gulper shark. So, yeah. Point being, it's confusing. It is a confusing shark. This is definitely one that scientists have been kind of scratching their heads on in terms of like, where does it belong to? <laughs> um, let's, let's see. Um, the fish base profile really quick. Centrophorus uh, means prickle or sharp point. Uh, forest, forest means barrier, 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 barrier referring to the group spines of the dorsal fin. fin, so fin so Centrophorus means barrier, barrier of spines. spines. And then grain means, means, means fullness, fullness. Referring, to referring to its granular, granular uh, 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 seed or grain or fullness, or fullness referring to its granular, 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 gran
usually benefit, 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 That's actually cool that they make a comment on that, because in that clip we were seeing, um, again, it was talking about the spiracles, how the shark will, if the shark is eating prey on the bottom, it can pump all that sand through its gills and spiracles. Um, that's actually interesting that there's a note here that it's usually benthic and epibenthic, so I mean, it spends a lot of its time near the bottom. Uh, adults mean, uh, feed mainly on bony fish such as hake, epigonids, lanternfish, herring, smelts, cods, rat tails, squids, and crustaceans. Very cool. Okay. Um, let's scan Florida Museum of Natural History. And I, I, I'll just shout out if there's something new about this. That's so funny. I, I mean, sorry, this, this kind of makes me laugh. Like, danger to humans. Like, I mean, I feel like, I think fish base, am I, am I tripping? Did fish base say this too? Threat to humans. It's just kind of funny. Like, it's funny that, like, um, you know, we have to make a note of, like, how dangerous is this. And this is, this is like, a squashy small shark that is not going to do anything. And it's, like, you know, just because it's a shark does not mean it's automatically dangerous or, or needs a note. You know, this is, I don't know, I just think it's kind of funny. Uh, geographical distribution. I mean, it looks like it's in the North Atlantic, South Atlantic, Indian Ocean, even the Eastern Pacific. And, like, um, I think IUCN said this, it's very patchy. Um, but if it's all the same species, that makes sense. Um, just, again, deep water habitat being very consistent throughout the world because there's no real... There's no giant variance um, with temperature. Um, you know, it, it's... Pretty consistent, so it makes sense that this actually probably would be a cosmopolitan species. That's a cool term. Gulper shark is bathy demersal. I think that means bottom dwelling in the deep sea, is what that translates to. So living and feeding at depths exceeding 200 meters. It's a deep water dogfish. Okay, there we go. Finally. Finally. Okay. So this is kind of what I was talking about. It's still kind of grainy, but remember I said, I guess half an hour ago, like, this shark actually, it, like, in, in photos at a distance, it looks like a solid block of brown or, you know, dark, but or like, like gray. But when you really take a closer look, you can see, you can actually kind of see this here, these really tiny white dots. Um, again, it's a really grainy photo, but this is the best one we have that, like, proves that I'm not crazy. Like, like, um, this, this species actually has a really beautiful, um, color, uh, palette that is very subtle. Um, so at a distance, it looks like it's just a solid block of black or brown. Boy, when you look closer, it looks like a star field. It's it's really really beautiful. Um, I'm really really happy to have seen this in life. Um, it was over a decade ago when I saw that uh, individual specimen. But um, I'm glad there's a photo that's close enough where you can kind of see it. The, these little dots here, you can kind of see what I'm talking about a little bit. Um, and like between that and just like, these gorgeous eyes that are super haunting and reflective and like look very alien. Um, it's it's a really actually you know what zooming out you can see that better you can see like those like real little white dots better so I don't know it's it's as far as deep water sharks go this this is maybe like up there for me as maybe one of the most uniquely beauteous or beautiful it's it's a uh, there's something about this one that is just like it's disarming in terms of like it seems like a, a generic shark at a distance and then the more you look at it and the more you learn about it it's like oh it's actually really it looks really odd and like really beautiful in a weird way so 
Let's see. Teeth of both jaws are blade-like and form interconnecting cutting edges. Very cool. Let's take a look at that. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's a great photo, actually. Oh, my gosh. I was going to say let's go to sharkreferences.com uh, to take a look at that, but... Um, and we'll still go to sharkreferences.com because that's not going to be a good... That's not high resolution enough. Uh, still. Ugh, that's a good photo, actually. Freaky, freaky. Shark of mystery. <laughs> I like that. I just saw that comment, Howard. I think, yeah, you know, that's actually a good nickname for it. As far as, uh, you know, if we ever name a new kind of centrophorus... Um, we can call it the Mysterious Shark, or Mystery Shark. Like, that would be, that would be a really cool name. So, <laughs> or Shark of Mystery. Uh, let's check out the jaw set. Um, because I know... Oh, wow. Uh, usually sharkreferences.com has a jaw set. Uh, it does have a diagram here. Sorry, I always do this. I always do this. I always do this. I always try to zoom in, and it just takes me everywhere. Sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll look at those photos much more closely in a little bit. Um, okay, I won't zoom in, but uh, yeah, this is really cool. This is actually kind of uh, kind of like uh, pike dogfish teeth a little bit. This, this row is kind of like pike dogfish teeth. This bottom row is different. This looks really, really weird. Um, but this row right here is... Um, Actually, do I have that right? Is this the top row and this is the bottom row? Because if so, that's that's almost like inverted. That is really, really strange. Usually for sharks, the top row of teeth is the one with the bigger teeth. But yeah, I don't know, I don't know if this is like a weird diagram or if that's actually what the case is. But anyway, um, but yeah, they, these teeth right here are really interesting because they, they look like interlocking, kind of like a chainsaw, kind of like dog, uh, pike dogfish, um, you know, like a distant cousin in the same order. Uh, but these teeth really are weird, uh, just like like a, a straight line of like these actually really nasty looking um, blades. They look like an intermediate between like a pointy tooth, ideal for fish, and yet like a almost like a saw edge tooth kind of reminiscent of larger predatory sharks, so pretty cool. Um, this is a really nice diagram of the denticles, which are actually pretty prominent, uh, which is, I guess, how it got its name, uh, granulosis, meaning like the grain or seed. That actually makes sense. Um, so, like, in turn, referring to the rough skin, uh, th this, this definitely, like... Um, you can see why, like, like usually shark dermal denticles are more folded and it's more like three or five ridges, but this is like a single point. So that is actually pretty, that is pretty rough looking. Hmm. All right, let's properly take a look at some of these other photos. I'm glad there's a lot, actually. There's a lot of photos to review. Um, <laughs> so that that is a pretty freshly caught specimen. A uh, great view of the dorsal fin spine. We didn't really talk about the spines yet on this uh, species. Um, you can also see very, very... I hope you can see this on your end because um, those tiny white dots that I keep obsessing over, like you can see that in... You can see them in this photo, actually. You can see them. You can see them kind of more here, I guess, on the snout. Um, but actually, those might be kind of like the dermal denticles ref catching the light a little bit. Here are definitely, like, this is more like pigmentation, like back here. But this, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, I promise I'll shut up about the dots in a bit. But, um, but anyway, the spine is really interesting because we know that pike dogfish spines are venomous. So it would be kind of interesting to see if there's any research on, like, are gulper sharks' spines venomous? Um, or is this more like... Um, an artifact of evolution in terms of like it has a spine but it doesn't really function the same way pike dogfish spines do. I don't know. Um, really great shot of that beautiful creepy eye. Very eerie looking. It's like it is staring directly at you. Like, I don't know. Like this, it's, it, it's a beautiful shark. Um, it's hard to tell in this photo but I think those 
weird thin teeth are definitely the bottom row is when I'm I think I'm seeing that so the 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 teeth that look like pike dogfish teeth I think are still in the top row kind of where they should be and then the weird uh, teeth are in the bottom row that is a really cool photo oh there we go yeah you can see the complete specimen uh, very freshly caught and actually the uh, second dorsal fin that's a huge spine right there uh, one thing I'd be kind of curious about is that pike dogfish, they famously arch their backs to kind of like stab um, fishermen if they're being handled. And I wonder if uh, this species does a similar thing. I'm going to imagine it probably does um, as a defense mechanism where if uh, it is caught, um, I would not be surprised if it does a similar thing where it actually arches its back to try to stab um, uh, a handler with its spine. So... But that second one is nasty. That is huge looking, actually. It's as tall as the second dorsal fin, actually. So. Oh, this is weird. Wait a minute. This is really weird. Um, <laughs> I just saw your comment, Howard. Uh, we don't know what it eats or what eats it. Uh, yeah, let's figure that out, actually. Um, and I just saw your other comment, weird dentition. Uh, I totally agree because look at this diagram. Uh, so the tiny weird teeth, again, they look like they're on the top and then the big teeth are on the bottom. So either these illustrators are just screwing up all over the place, or this is actually what it is, is like the big teeth are on the bottom and the, the small teeth are on the top. Very, very, very weird. But let's go back to um, your comment in terms of like uh, predators and prey items. Uh, Florida Museum of Natural History should have that. The diet of the gulper shark has not been fully described, but the gulper shark is sought to feed on species of hake, perhaps in the family Macaruronidae, and lanternfish, perhaps in the family Mictophidae. Predators of gulper shark are unknown, but may include larger fishes and marine mammals. Interesting. Uh, we might be able to get more details as we look into the research, but let's take a look at hake, because hake are really funny fish, actually. Oh, actually, no. Let's, let's look at the family really quick. Um, just in case, because the hake I'm thinking of are funny fish, but this might be a different kind of hake. So, just in case it's a weird deep sea hake. Uh, okay, it's a slightly weird deep sea hake. So this is a prey item of the gulper shark. This isn't the happy hake that I think of. I used to take care of hake um, in an aquarium. Uh, so this was the was an intern at what was it the Seacoast Science Center in New Hampshire uh, in Rye, New Hampshire, and they had hake, which were really funny. Um, like they whenever I would feed them, they would actually like swim to the top of the tank and they had they almost had like this smile like it's, it's just the way their faces look but they were very very um they were very much they reminded me a lot of like puppies like they like the way they behaved was very like dog like which i i actually really love so i hey have a fun place in my heart like they're they're really funny um and also I, in my aquarium days i learned that different species of fish have different personalities uh the funniest one is the black sea bass uh, that one just doesn't really care what you do. <laughs> it's like, um, pufferfish are actually really funny. Pufferfish, uh, are, they like cameras. Uh, they like to swim up to you. They're very, uh, friendly, actually. Actually, honestly, you know what? Sorry, I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole, but like, I'm going to say it. Pufferfish are friendly. Like, like, like I've seen so many pufferfish, both in aquariums and in the wild, um, that just like come up to you and just are really like curious um or just like i don't know pufferfish are very very they're a gregarious group like like they're not they're not shy at all they're they got yeah they're, they're i don't know what it is about them but pufferfish are friendly but anyway sorry so pulling up gulper shark prey items uh we've got lanternfish uh so probably the most famous kind of fish that um has bioluminescence so lighting up in the dark I'd say lanternfish are probably the most famous group of that. Um, I wonder if they have... Oh, I guess you can kind of see... 
it's not the best photo just because it's or uh, illustration just because it's black and white but these large pores right here are photophores so these will glow blue um, in the deep sea so this is a gulper shark prey item and then this um, grenader wait a minute is it is there Remember that fish I was freaking out about a couple weeks ago? Uh, it's a deep sea fish, Bazocetus. Is that a grenader? I, we, I, sorry, I'm going off. Well, actually. Sorry. I'm really. No, it's not that one. It's a lizard fish. Sorry, I, I'm just remembering. I, it's Monday. I'm, I'm, I'm totally. Totally scatterbrained right now. Um. There's a creepy deep sea lizard fish that I was like really freaking out about a couple streams ago. And uh, yeah, anyway. So, okay, so we know this shark eats lanternfish and hakes. We don't know what eats it, but it might be more likely marine mammals. Um, although, again, those spines are pretty nasty. Like, I, I don't know what kind of marine mammal would be okay with ingesting that, so. Um. Oh, sorry. Florida Museum of Natural History had a comment on the dentition. I, I just wanted to take a look at really quick. Teeth of both jaws are blade-like and form interconnecting, cutting edges. The teeth of the upper jaw are moderately broad, with cusps varying from upright to oblique. The teeth of the lower jaw are broader than those of the upper jaw, and they have an oblique asymmetrical cusp. The number of so that's it. That is so weird. So that's it. So this is the lower jaw. These giant teeth that, like, you know, like, like they, they look like they should be in the upper jaw are actually in the lower jaw. And then the upper jaw has, like, the, the tiny needly teeth. That is the weirdest thing. Wow. That is, that is like, inverted. <laughs> like, that is, uh, that is not what most sharks are like. Um, uh, and I should have actually checked this. Like you can kind of see in this diagram too, very slightly. Yeah, the lower teeth are bigger than the upper teeth. That is the weirdest thing. Very, very strange. I've never. I don't. Have we ever seen that? Um, you can kind of see it in here too. Like uh, this is a great photo, by the way. Um, but like, yeah, you can see like the rows of the the tiny spear-like teeth, and then you could definitely see, like, the bigger, um, oblique teeth. Wow. Wow, have you ever, have you ever heard of, heard of that in, um, just, like, the shark world? Like, because I have not. I don't think we've covered any species that has that kind of jaw set. Oh, wow, that's a fantastic photo right there, too. Okay, yeah, again, this is a subtly surprising weird shark. <laughs> like this is one passing glance. Oh, hey, there you go. You can see I'm sorry. I, okay, I lied about shining up about the dots. Yep, you can very clearly see what I was talking about. Those spots right there. Uh, um, you can clearly see those kind of like above the head on the, on the top of the head above the eye. That's a great photo showing that. So uh, yeah, subtly beautiful shark, subtly very complicated shark. Uh, very weird anatomy. Very, very strange animal. Um, you take one look at it, you don't think you have something unique, and then the more you look at it, the more like, wait a minute, this is a very, very, very strange shark. Um, wow. And then can we talk about again, like, how proportionally enormous these eyes are compared to, like, the rest of the body? Like, like the, like the eyes are bigger than the mouth. You know, that's that's kind of wild. It's another really odd thing about this species. Oof. Dude, I, I like Ulper Sharks a lot now. Like, I, I think these are weird and beautiful. I, I really, really like these species. Yikes. So strange. Weird, weird shark. Oh. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, short description, revised description after White et al. in 2013. So that is 10 years ago that they revised what the shark is. Oof, so that's really, really recent as far as the whole taxonomic questioning in terms of 
um, what the species is. Um, okay. I think... I don't know if there's any more um, info from Florida Museum of Natural History. I just want to take a final glance at this. Uh, oviviparous with a gestation period of about two years. Okay, yeah, no more, I had no more real new information, so we'll get out of Florida Museum of Natural History. We'll keep fish base open. Um, the Shark Research Institute, really cool website. We were talking about this with Jess. Uh, this is a really great um, illustration by Mark Dando on this species. So uh, really good uh, basic type illustration of uh, from uh, or included in Sharks of the World. Let's see if there's any new pieces of information here. Prey, bony fishes, and also squid and crustaceans. Interesting. Critically endangered regionally around Australia. So this is endangered globally, but uh, in Australia it's critically endangered. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I don't know if I had um, more things open. Uh, just taking a quick look at uh, FAO. Uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Oh, sorry. This is a cool map, actually. I've never, I've never seen this map before. Um, weird, actually. So I, I'm assuming this is like the FAO's map as far as um okay this is actually really cool let's talk about this really quick so this map right here is splitting as an example the atlantic ocean up into quadrants so this is the northwest atlantic i'm assuming this is like the tropical western atlantic this is the northeast atlantic um ecologically it's not I mean, like, ecologically, it's not the worst thing in the world, I guess, but, like, it's, it's, um, for example, as far as this quadrant right here, this is pretty accurate, where, uh, it's beginning in the, um, Outer Banks, which is a famous area splitting cold water from warm water, um, but, uh, it, it is interesting, it, it, there, there is a little bit of an arbitrariness to it, um, but I think the most inter interesting thing to point out on this map um, before we move on, is um, see these like bubbles right here, um, or the, this this bulging line, um, and then also the bulging line around uh, Bermuda. Uh, this is the exclusive economic zone, um, uh, where I think I believe it is 200 miles offshore. Um, do I have that right? Yeah, I believe it is 200 miles offshore. Uh, is the exclusive economic zone of a country, um, as far as like being able to harvest ex or have exclusive harvest rights of um, fishing in that area. Um, if you go beyond this line, this is international waters, meaning like anything goes. This is free reign, um, you know, no one owns it. It is just whatever. Um, but uh, inside the line, um, you know, and this will, this will be drawn to like each respective country's boundary, Inside a line is territorial waters that, um, you know, as far as like fishing, like you can't, you know, you cannot fish in another country unless you have like, I guess, permission. Um, and then also, uh, you know, you'd be subject to that country's laws or like you have to be uh, mindful of, uh, you're entering into that country's space. So just want to point that out because it is, this is an interesting map that's actually kind of detailing it. And it makes sense because Food and Agriculture Organization United Nations does have, you know, a fisheries focus, like a harvesting and resource focus. So, very interesting. Um, just catching up on comments, Howard. Not sure I've noticed, but that is surely a specialist dentition. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a good observation because it's like I, I'm curious like what that would really be ideal for. You know, I really wonder what they eat and how their jaws compare to the relatives. The lower jaw reminds me of Isis Teus, the cookie cutter. It does actually. Um, because, I mean, I wonder, one thing that kind of comes to mind, maybe this is like a scavenger um, in a weird way, because actually, this is kind of a cool, um, kind of getting back to your illustration, uh, like with a whale fall, right? One very plausible use of those jaws is, hold on, let me get back to the jaws themselves. Okay. Imagine like you're this species maybe hooking into, you know, like like a whale fall, you know, and then you're using the lower jaw and you kind of do a cork like like kind of like a, a writhing motion because pike dogfish, the shallow water dogfish do that. And cookie cutters, like you said, are famous for, you know, doing like that perfect cookie cutter shape. Um, so like. And th these lower teeth are huge, and they, they work like a chain chainsaw, like a single blade, right? So I, I would not be surprised if this is a kind of shark species that actually might, like, scavenge, um, you know, and especially, like, in a whale fall environment where it finds that, um, you know, big piece of blubber, and then it actually will kind of, like, tear into it and you know use those bizarre large teeth to kind of like create like 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 it will do that writhing motion like going back and forth and you know dislodge a piece of that meat so i think i think that's totally plausible i know that the research does not say that um so we cannot verify that as of yet but i personally think that's kind of plausible just because cookie cutter sharks do those famous bites like you said I know pike dogfish do like the writhing motion with like the chain, like their conveyor belt of teeth or their kind of chainsaw teeth, um, and like you, like you and I are both observing. This is a very weird dentition. <laughs> like this is really strange. So I feel like there's more going on. Like this is this cannot be just like a piscivorous shark, because if it was, like you know, wouldn't it have teeth that are kind of like um, tiger shark teeth? Or sorry, not tiger shark, uh, sand tiger shark teeth that are more like needly, you know, like kind of gripping slippery fish. I feel like I feel like this is definitely something going on, um, and I kind of like this whale fall hypothesis, um, which like I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by that. I'm gonna submit that as as um, for any future researchers uh, who may watch this video and who may do research on. Gulper Sharks, please let us know what you think about the whale fall hypothesis in terms of uh, does the shark maybe, you know, scavenge the deep seabed and maybe use these large teeth to kind of help cut away, you know, meat from a whale carcass? Like, like I think that's kind of plausible. So that would be that would be a really cool research question. So, um, but yeah, any Gulper Shark researchers, feel free to make a comment on that. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the FAO profile page just want to take a look at this oh this is a new thing let's talk about its diet epigonids let's check out what an epigonid is Rat, we're adding like this little list of prey items deep water cardinal fishes that's really cool oh these are cool <laughs> huge eyes um, but that's actually really cool Interesting. So, so far we've got just fish. Just fish for prey items for the gulper shark. I kind of like... We're, we're going to keep these up here. I, I kind of like this little... Um, this is like a little collection of verified prey items for gulper sharks. So, we'll, we'll keep a tally of what we got. Uh, sorry, we were on the FAO. Da, 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 da. Oh! Oh, this is interesting. Uh, who wrote this? Okay, so this is the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, but um, let, let me read what just kind of caught my eye. The Japanese Centrophorus atromarginatus is often recognized as a valid species, but I tentatively include it in the C. granulosus following Bigelow and Schroeder, who compare the holotype of C. atromarginatus with the Atlantic specimens and accounts of C. granulosus 
and can find no species differences except possibly long ago openings in the Atlantic material. I do agree with these writers that the separation of these species remains an open question. So is this a quote? This is a quote, I guess, from Big Lone Schroeder. Interesting. The validity of Oh, this is so weird. The validity of C. magiquensis and C. braganzi, I have no idea what these two are, are uncertain also. These species are listed under C. granulosis as a pre uh, present expedient only. Oh man, the, technolo uh, the taxonomy is so messed up on this species. <laughs> like, ah, uh, it could be everything. It could be none of them. Uh, that's, yeah, just for context, um, Hold on, just for context. So the shark we're talking about tonight is Centrophor Centrophorus granulosus, the gulper shark. And then apparently it used to be split into Centrophorus granulosus, Centrophorus acus, Centrophorus lusitanicus, and Centrophorus nyakong. Nyakong is probably the most famous one um, that I, I remember kind of growing up with. But then all of those got reorganized into the first Galactic Empire, into, sorry, into Gulper Shark, um, Centrophorus granulosus. So they all got reorganized into one species. Um, so, so th those names are no longer valid. But then these things, Matchkinensis and Braganza and Natural Marginatus, I have no idea what these are. <laughs> like, oh, never mind. Sorry, I'm just taking a look. Atromaticnatus is the dwarf gulper shark, which might just be a gulper shark. Oh man, this is this is challenging. This is this is a weird, weird genus. This is this is a very, very strange genus. Oh man, um, sorry. Let me catch up on comments. Uh, weird, weird genus. Uh, very difficult in terms of like, <laughs> you know, just. I'm sure researchers include maybe maybe Chip <laughs> probably have had a really hard time navigating all these revisions. Um, I mean, it, it, it's kind of getting close to like fossil shark uh, revisions, like fossil shark taxonomic revisions. Just like wow, this is this is getting a little wild. Um, this is really random, by the way, because uh, this is just a generic photo website, uh, Superstock, which I've, I've never used. I usually, I do use a lot of photo websites for, for uh, some of my shark videos, but like I've never used this one before. No, off no offense to it, it looks pretty cool. Um, and actually, definitely no offense to it, because it does have a really cool photo of a gulper shark right here. This is actually beautiful right here. And it, it seems terrible that I am like, you know, showing it and everything, but at the same time, it's like, this is super watermarked, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's super watermarked, you know, and it's a gorgeous photo, but, um, and we're, we're doing this for research, we're doing this for educational purposes, so, but it is a really great photo of the species in life, in fact, actually, um, because the Andy Merck photos are of the blackfin gulper shark, uh, this is actually, I think, our first gulper shark photo in life. Um, this is the first one of the species, or, um, I mean, we did have video earlier, but this is the first one of the species, um, first still photo of it, just kind of doing its own thing. Beautiful reflective eyes, very close to the seabed, huge dorsal spines, it's a male, huge second dorsal spine, that's actually a really beautiful photo. Sorry, I know th this is definitely kind of pushing it, so I will get out of here as far as, like, I don't know if that's really the greatest thing for me to be streaming, but it was watermarked, so. <laughs> um, this is a weird website. I don't really know what this is. Uh, Zach Run, the Gulper Shark. But um, it has uh, actually a really cool image right here that I wanted to kind of take a look at. Um, deep sea image with these deep sea eels. And a gulper shark investigating something right here. So second photo of the species in life. <laughs> I just saw your comment, Howard. Nomenclature. Fossil revisions seem endless. Oh my gosh. One one of the biggest things I've learned this year from this stream is that modern revisions are are starting to get there too. Like I, I'm shocked how much it's been revised. Like 
Tiger sharks, sand tigers, and gulper sharks. These are now the three big species where I'm like, wow, I'm blown away how much this has changed, honestly. Like, these were, these were changes. The tiger shark and sand tiger were changes I was not expecting either. Like, sand, uh, tiger shark, na actually, both of them. Both of them are now their own family. Like, they're both now their own unique family, which is completely mind-blowing. I mean, it makes sense, but it is, it's still, like, wow. Pretty wild. Hmm. Like, that is a paradigm shift for, for my life, personally. <laughs> like, like, that's pretty big. Um, yeah, it's really cool seeing uh, this species investigating... I don't know if this is, like, a cable... Or, like, a research part of, like, the research vessel that's maybe kind of investigating the deep sea. Very, very cool. Uh, we've seen this photo before, this one before, but... And also, yeah, this one's close to the seabed as well, so. Oh, this is the file fish I saw. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Oh god. Uh, this is... White tip you. Oh, Lost Shark. Okay, so let's go... Uh, while we have some time, because uh, it's almost 10.30, let's take a closer look at some Gulper Shark research. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um... And it's funny, th th this is an interesting stream where it started out kind of like chill and then like this shark is starting to get a little surprising in terms of like the dentition and um, again, just some of the images coming out where it's like you can see more details. So, uh, and I'm, it's pretty cool. So, excuse me. Um, let's see if there's any cool research on the species. Um, and then also uh, while I'm you know, just kind of scanning papers, seeing if there's something cool that we can see. Um, I actually like this one, Structure and Composition of Deep Sea Fish Community. Let's check that out. Um, any thoughts on... Oh, hey. In fossil shark research, there are lumpers and splitters. Yes. Um, I'm like... I, uh, where, what would you err on the side on? I think I would err on the side of lumping, personally. Like, if I was in charge of shark research, I'd probably lump, is, is, is probably what I would do, but I don't know. What, where do you stand on that, out of curiosity? Because, like, like, part of me is, like, just nervous about, like, like, because firstly, like, a single shark's mouth, like, has so many different teeth types. Or tooth types, and you know, applying that over millions of years, it's like I, I I'd be really nervous trying to like split it down. But let me, let, what, what do you think uh, as far as uh, lumping versus splitting? Oh, sorry, I just I just realized this. Very, please confirm you are a human by completing the capture. Oh gosh, yes, I am a human. Okay, there we go. I, I guess it knows I'm a human, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is gonna be really cool. So, okay, I think this one's gonna be really cool. Oh, sorry, to finish my point, um, since uh, this might be a pretty cool paper and a pretty big one, uh, and we're getting close to 10.30, um, let me know if you have any idea. Oh, dude, shoot. Do you know what, Howard? I totally forgot about, uh, Motorhead. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about, like, um, Motorhead for, like, music tonight. Sorry about that. Um, I just saw your comment. Uh, more of a lumper, but sometimes a morphological split is required. Gotcha, yeah. No, that makes sense. Sorry, I just, I just realized we were talking about Motorhead last week for music. Um, like a Motorhead, because, like, my challenge was to try to find a Motorhead, um, uh, hold on. A Motorhead, um, like, playlist? So, or, like, a relaxing, like, study thing? So, uh, so I guess the challenge would be, uh, because I, I definitely want to find this, uh, for next week's stream, uh, what is a Motorhead appropriate shark, uh, for next week? Um, so just thoughts on that in terms of like what we uh what a good species would be to cover next week that would be in line with like motorhead uh, oh thank you N mp no problem thank you i appreciate that i i feel really bad actually so thank you uh because we did talk about it it literally was like the first time i was like oh yeah we we like like the original intent of the stream was to have music recommendations from viewers so like 
fail on my part, but thank you. I, I appreciate that. So next week we'll do Motorhead, and we'll do a Motorhead kind of shark. Um, and uh, while thinking of a choice, let's take a look at... Um, this, the title just caught my eye. Structure and composition of the deep sea fish community between 150 and 2,050 uh, meter depth on the Canary Island, Islands East Central Atlantic. This is going to be really cool. Um, that is an amazing range because that's the very end of the sunlit zone going way into the midnight zone. This is going to be really cool. By Raul uh, Trae Portela. Jose A. Gonzalez, Jose M. Lorenzo, and Jose G. Uh, Pauello. Pa pa yeah, got to it. Okay. The structure and composition of the deep sea fish community, and also, sorry, Canary Islands is really, really cool place for sharks and just, like, shark research. So, this is going to be really cool. Uh, structure and composition of the deep sea fish community living on the slope of the Canary, off the Canary Islands, eastern central Atlantic, were investigated. Data were collected by means of eight research cruises, 165 stations, at depths between 150 and 2,050 meters. A total of 4,475 fish specimens belonging to 43 families and 78 species, 21 Alaska ranks, one Chimera, and 56 uh, Actinopterygians, so that's, that's a special group of bony fish, were collected with long lines. In the number of individuals, the deep sea demersal fish fauna was dominated by fishes of the family. Oh boy, okay. Synaphobranchidae, followed by Sparidae, Somniosidae, this is sleeper sharks. Centrophoridae, this is gulper sharks. And Trichuridae. The main abundant species were, I don't know what that is, Synaphobranchus affinus, Dantex macrophthalmus, Pagellus acarnae. Zamius squam squamulosus is a shark. That one is a... I think Zamius is a kind of smaller sleeper shark, if I have that right. Aphinopus uh, carbo. Squalus megalops is a kind of dogfish. Centroscymnus celepis is the Portuguese dogfish? Do I have that right? And then Centroscymnus owned stony is another kind of dogfish. I'm pretty sure Centroscymnus celepis is the Portuguese dogfish, but we'll, we'll check that out. Um, and I, I'm hoping they'll have photos. If they don't, we will research these. We'll pull up pictures because um, I'm not going to say all these names out loud and like not, not have photos of them. So, um, but let's see. Lazarinx with fi uh, 15, uh, I can't count. 1,519 individuals showed a high abundance, 34% uh, uh, on the long lines, although their importance increased when the data were analyzed by weight, reaching... Uh, <laughs> I cannot do math. I cannot do numbers tonight. I don't know why. 4,588 kilograms, with Zamius squam uh, squamulosus being the fourth most important species. So this is really cool. I know there's a lot of scientific names, but I hope they will have more details and photographs of these species. This is really cool. Geographical location of study area. Um, gray areas indicate the station's locations. So there's the northern coast of Africa, and there's the Canary Islands right off there. It's really cool to see like these um, bath bathymetric contours, just showing you how freaking deep this is. Like that—that that is a what an environment. Like like in kind of like a short area, uh, in a small area, you can get into like the abyss so quickly. That. That's a pretty amazing study study area, so. Okay, if they don't have photos, I feel like they should have photos. If they don't have photos, we'll definitely pull these up. Hmm. These figures are catching my eye. Um, model for abundance built with errors, uh, Gaussian errors. Abundance for A is total fish species. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, so 
basically like the deeper you go the the less abundant it is so it's actually really cool to see there's a steep decline um, of fish species as you get below um, hold on oh man uh, I don't know even how to estimate that let's just say a hundred meters right as you get below 100 meters, the abundance steeply declines. Um, there's a little bit of a rise around 500 meters, so that is the twilight zone. A little bit of a fall, a rise again right at the boundary of the midnight zone right here. And then this is, the, it's an interesting pattern. Like this rising and falling in abundance. And then, um, Uh, C is cartilaginous fish, so these are the sharks right here. So the sharks really drop in abundance until 500, or sorry, until 500 meters where it starts rising up to like a peak abundance at about the boundary of the midnight zone at a thousand meters, and it's actually fairly high in the deep. So, ugh. Freaky. Yeah, okay. What is this? Oh, this is really cool. Um, so this is uh, kind of ranking the species from um, shallow to deep in a way. Like some species are, are here. This is actually going to be really cool. Okay, this is actually really going to be really cool. And this is this will be kind of like a cool tour we can do. Um, and we'll wrap up the night with this. Uh, we'll pull up pictures of each of the sharks that come up here. And we're going to go from the shallow water end to the deep water end. So this is actually going to be awesome. Um, so let me let me kind of open up my tabs a little bit, uh, just to just to kind of free things up, uh, just to make sure like because this is going to be a lot of sharks. It's going to be a lot of sharks. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, here we go. And let me check the comments really quick. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. How are you? Um, Mako would work well. Is there the fastest? Will be gone. Will also be cool. Uh, guitarfish is a ray. Guitarfish is a kind of ray. It's confusing because it is the sharkiest ray in the world. It, it just looks so robust. But um, a guitarfish's head um, is fused to its pectoral fins, and then the gills are on the other are on the underside of the body. So it is considered a ray, um, but it is confusing because it is it just looks so wild. Um, it it just looks so much like a shark. So Mako would be cool. Did, have we not done one before? Actually, um, we've done so many laminids. I'm actually I'd be pleasantly surprised if we haven't done a Mako. Because I'm actually down for a Mako if, if we have not. We've done Basking Shark, Sand Tiger, Poor Beagle, Crocodile. We have not done a Mako. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do the class. Yeah, let's do it, actually. <laughs> Mako it is. Let's do the classic one, the Short Fin Mako. Because um, there's two of them. Short Fin Mako, Isurus, Oxyrhynchus. I don't know if I spelled that right. Um... And that, that is, yeah, yeah, because I serve as punk, this is the uh, long fin mako, so. Yeah, let's do short fin mako. We're going to get so much footage on that. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, short fin mako and motorhead. Uh, let's do it, so. I'm going to make a note on that. All right. Good pick. Yeah, what's really cool is, like, kind of looking back on this year, um, like, 2023, super lambda forms like like we, we we are like rocking the lambda forms as far as biodiversity goes uh which is really cool uh we're covering i think actually yeah uh, i think with the mako so with the mako i think we'll like pr 
probably hit every genus, and the last one's the Mega Mouth. So we gotta do the Mega Mouth, I, I think, later in the year. So, um, but anyway, here we go. Let's dive into the deep, checking out the sharks. This is gonna be a fun way to end, so we'll do this and then we'll end tonight's stream. But uh, starting from the shallow end to the deep end, what sharks do we see? So, we got Muscleless Muscleless. I'm trying to think if there's a better way to do this in terms of... Uh, fish paste doesn't have like really big flashy photos, so... Um, maybe Wikipedia. But Wikipedia sometimes doesn't have images either. Well, but you know what? I, I think maybe maybe Wikipedia. So okay, I guess we'll we'll keep it at Wikipedia. So here we go on the shallow end. It's kind of like an older foot, uh, older thing. No, actually. Hmm. Uh, cause like fish base is so fish base is good. I just it just gets so tricky sometimes. Okay, yeah, okay, we'll do fish base because Wikipedia is not gonna have everything, and fish base fish base has everything. So okay, here we go. So we got muscles, muscles, the classic smooth hound on the shallow end. So beautiful species, cousin to muscles canis, which is one of the very first streams we did. It's a shark I also talk about a lot. So, very cool. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Zeus, Faber. That's, I wonder what kind of fish that is. These are mostly fish. Squalus megalops. Cool. Uh, short nose spur dog. So this is kind of a uh, nice cousin of the pike dogfish. Actually looks uh, a lot like it in a lot of different ways. So right now, pretty normal. We are, where are we at this point? We are 200 meters deep, so we're just entering into the twilight zone. So these are happy sunlit shark species. So let's go into the twilight zone. Heptranchius perlo. There we go. So that is a seven gill shark. There we go. Now it's starting to get a little weird. Uh, beautiful species. Uh, very creepy. Uh, and these sharks have awesome teeth. I, I hope, I don't think there's a quick photo of that, but um, we have them here too. So this is, I forget the, I think the sharp nose seven gill shark is a common name for it. Really, really cool species. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Trancheus Prillo, still kind of in the 200 meter range. These are all bony fish. Oh, uh, Galeus melastomus. That's a shark. That's a cat shark, I think, if I have that right. Yep, the blackmouth cat shark. This is really cool. It's actually a really pretty deep water shark. Very, very pretty. Right. These are good photos. All right. Uh, it's hard. Oh, there we go. Galeorhinus galeus, the taupe shark. Uh, 
Yep. Beautiful species. Uh, very famous uh, species that has been harvested a lot. Uh, poster child for... Uh, we've talked about this. We've had... I think we've had taupe sharks on the stream before. Um, a poster child for shark conservation. Or no, soup fin shark. Is it, it's not the same thing, is it? Is it the same thing? Soup fin shark, taupe shark? I'm going nuts. Yeah, t no, taupe shark is... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. We, we famously talked about the Top Shark because we had um, the stream cut out, so we did the uh, the other stream. Sorry. Uh, okay. Get on his gillies. Pseudotriacus microdon. That's a deep sea cat shark. Wow, there's actually a lot more sharks than I thought there was going to be. Hold on. Eehee. <laughs> False cat shark. It's a creepy photo. Uh, it's not a good preserved specimen, but this is definitely a deep water shark, just with the skin coloration. All right. Wow. Uh, Deanna uh, uh, Hystricosa is also. Is there a lot of sharks actually? Deanna Hystricosa is a. Um, dogfish. The rough, long-nosed dogfish. All right, yep, we're definitely in the twilight zone. This is weird. Huge eyes, long pointed snout. Uh, look how low that dorsal fin is. Like the, f the spine is almost like fusing into the back. Creepy shark. Also, yeah, I don't know why I'm going back to the fish base. Um, main photo, we'll just, we'll just keep these big ones here. Oh man, uh, I th you know what? That's so many different sharks. Uh, we might be here all night, actually. Um, but we'll keep going as long as we can. Uh, Squaliosis laticatus, Pseudococcarus kamahari. Um, so many. Okay, we'll 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 just do like the the really famous one. Pseudococcarus kamahari is the crocodile shark. Nope. Come on. This is where fish base gets weird. Come on. There we go. Sorry about that. Our old friend, the crocodile... Oh, such a good photo. Our old friend, the crocodile shark, the deep sea lambded shark. Or not lambded, sorry. It's a deep sea cousin of the great white, but it's it's not a lambded. It's a it's its own family. Uh, let's see. Uh, Delacius licca is the kite fin shark. I like that the music is gaining. I don't know if you can hear the music, but I, I do like that it's getting a little eerier. Um, it's actually really cool as we're getting deeper and deeper. Um, yeah, sharks with big eyes, kind of freaky looking. Uh, Amatris as a lantern shark. I think we'll just kind of keep moving because I, I don't. I don't want to spend all night looking up sharks. Um, like, like, because that's. I think it's going to get very boring very quickly. Actually, so. Uh, there's Centrophilus granulosus, our gulper shark. Yep, we're back with him. Alright. Hexantius grisius is the six gill shark. These things are monsters, by the way. They're, they get huge. Let's check out the maximum size of this. There's some really, uh, Blue Planet had some, yeah, look at that. These guys get so big. 
It's <laughs> a good photo, actually. Next to the boat. Suitable mood, mood music. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging. I'm digging the Subnautica as we as we uh, get closer and closer. So. Oh, hey, sorry, Howard. I just saw your comment. Uh, like, uh, there are a ton of Gale Rice relatives. I have lots of their fossils. Awesome. Super, super cool. Yeah, these are these are awesome. Yeah, I I kind of like that photo, um, that one right there. So we'll keep that. All right. Somniosus rostratus. So this is a cousin of a Greenland shark, but I don't know what this is. So let's definitely. I, I like that photo actually. Oh, I like that one too. Okay, yeah, this is uh, like a new tab. Let's check it out. The little sleeper shark. Uh, it is very small. Oh. Weird. That is really weird. So this is in the same genus as Greenland sharks. And you actually, you can tell uh, the head. You can actually tell that. That's really weird. Um, the head does look very, very similar to a Greenland shark, but this is definitely very small, like, like, like on a small scale. That, that's, that really took me by surprise. Um, cause yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, like, just like the way that's shaped, like the gills are so low, spiracles, like, yeah, that does look like a Greenland shark, but it's just like on a smaller scale. That is very weird. I've never seen that one before. Ugh. Uh, oh man, man, there's so many. There's so many here. Um, Centrosciamus crepidator. Uh, let's check that out. Oh no, I want to keep the blackmouth cat shark. Uh, this is this is this is, whatever. Canary Islands has got a lot of cool deep water sharks. I don't want to close any of these tabs actually. These are really cool. Very creepy. I also love that name, Centrosciamus crepidator. There we go, the long nose velvet dogfish. Great name, crepidator. That's actually a really, that's a that's a really pretty deep sea shark, actually. And I I like this. Look look at this is so odd. This whole feature of like the back is smoothly transitioning into this ridge, culminating in the spine, then the dorsal fin. Very very weird looking. Very cool. Uh, let's see some other weird ones. Dana profundorum, deepwater cat shark, Centrophus squamosus is another gulper shark. Zamius squamulosus. Zamius is. I don't know what that one is actually. The, oh, the velvet dogfish. So this is a, a cousin, I guess, of the long-nosed velvet dogfish. That's actually that's a beautiful photo, actually. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe the belly is that dark, that unusually dark, because I do think this is actually a group that has biofluorescence. I think that is something going on with this group. Um, it's getting kind of late, but we'll keep going for a little bit. Um, I do want to kind of verify that fish base should have a note if it's bioluminescent or if, if, if it has something going on like that. I don't see anything. Okay. I I thought there's something going on with. I, I thought there was something kind of going on if sharks have like if deep water sharks have like super dark bellies. I think there's something to do with bioluminescence, but for another stream, for another time. So let's see. Centrosciamus oestoni. 
a Metro's Princeps, famous lantern shark. Centroskymnus coelolepis. We got to look that one up. I believe that's the Portuguese dogfish. There we go. <laughs> the Portuguese dogfish. Oh man, look at those teeth. Really weird, really creepy. Uh, great music for that. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Oh, man. I, I love deep water sharks. I mean, I love all sharks, but deep water sharks are just so cool. Uh, also, I one thing I love about deep water sharks is that if you're a big shark person, they're kind of niche, you know? Like, uh, not many people know what these things are. Like, like the average person has no idea what this is uh which i i always think is kind of fun you know I, I i just think it's kind of cool like it's you know very cool so uh one thing i'm noticing is uh, the gills on this species are actually really low too and it's just like a uh actually yeah delicious look a kyphon shark gills are kind of low i was gonna just pull up the sleeper shark photo there we go sleeper shark photo gills are really low near the door uh uh, pectoral fin because uh, these are all in this they're all cousins like they're all very similar um, and I think actually that is the deepest shark on this list let's see yep yep centroscimus coelolepis this one is the deepest one on this list um, let's look up one more, because I've, I've not really been nice to the lantern sharks. So we'll check it out, and then we'll do a quick little tally of everybody. Emopterus princeps. Yeah, just, just shout out to, oh, the great lantern shark. That's a good one, it's just to represent the group. So just a shout out to lantern sharks. I ha I've been kind of ignoring them. So here we go. So... Quick tally on all these species. Uh, the silver of the dorsal. I just saw your comment, Howard. The silver of the dorsal fin extends right from the head. It's so cool. It's such a weird feature. Actually, yeah, this is a good comparison. Uh, deep water life is amazing. I agreed, because this is a really good comparison. Look at this shark. The, this lantern shark looks a lot, even though it's of the deep. Um, you know, the dorsal fin is very much separate from the body, like flat angle, then you get the dorsal fin. But then when you look at this, Deania, like, uh, it's so weird. The ri it's a ridge, like the head um, and the back form a ridge culminating in the dorsal fin. It's so, so strange. So quick tally and recap of these deep water sharks. We've got the uh, lantern shark, Amopterus princeps, Centroscimus coelolepis, a Portuguese dogfish. Very creepy. Uh, Zamius squamulosus, the velvet dogfish. These are going to be great to do in the future. Centrosolacus crepidator. Uh, is it the long nosed velvet dogfish for the common name? Long nosed velvet dogfish, yep. Just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, same thing. Yeah, just a smooth ridge into the fin. Uh, the dwarf sleeper shark. Uh, so this little cousin of the Greenland shark, Somniosus rostratus. So same genus. Deanna histricosa. What was this one called again? This is an arrowhead dogfish. The rough long-nosed dogfish. I think there's another Deania that's called an arrowhead dogfish. Uh, Delacius licka, the kite fin shark. Uh, this is a cousin of a cookie cutter. Uh, different different genus, but they they are um, I think they're kind of fairly closely related. Hexanthus griseus, the six gill shark, behemoth of the sea, like of the deep sea, very very big and wild. 
Galeus melastomus, the black mouth cat shark. Uh, you know, something that looks a little bit prettier and a little bit uh, less frightening. Heptranchius perlo, back to nightmare land. Uh, the sharp nosed seven gill shark. And then the crocodile shark, uh, famous deep water cousin of uh, great whites and makos, including uh, next week's mako. And then finally, Centrophorus granulosus, our gulper shark. Um, let's find a proper photo of a verified, not that one, gulper shark species. Um, yeah, it's not a great one, but uh, I mean, just the angle's a little odd, but we'll take it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you know what, let's, let's end on, this was a really cool stream, so let's end on the actual video that we had earlier, um, if I can load it, oh, might have broken it, <laughs> Centra, uh, Forest, Centra, Granulosis. No, 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 no. We had it. We had it. It was on Discovery Channel. I know we're streaming it. It literally was here. No! Okay, the alien shark thing disappeared. I don't know where it is. I really wish we had that footage. Mega Mouth. It's showing me everything but Gulper Shark. Okay, there we go. Sorry, this is what I wanted. Oh, there's Chip. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm losing it. Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna not end on an ad. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, um, once that ad plays, I just want to have a quick image of this beautiful gulper shark. Okay. And there we go, finally, my goodness, that took forever. There we go, there is our shark. Okay. Enough of you. And freeze. <laughs> okay, well, I think we'll uh, end it with there. But um, thank you so much for watching. Sorry, it was an awkward ending. Uh, because that shark list of deep sea species I thought was really cool. So, um, But that was a really fun stream on the gulper shark. Uh, Centrophus granulosus. It went in a lot of fun directions that I wasn't expecting. Um, and again, I think it's actually legitimately one of the strangest and most beautiful, and uh, disarmingly so, deep water sharks. Um, just, it is full of surprises, and it took us in directions that I didn't think we were really going to go. Um, so I thought it was a really cool uh, shark to talk about tonight. So, but anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited for next week with the Mako Shark. Uh, we'll go back up to the surface with a very famous predator, and uh, we'll have plenty of stuff to review for that. But in the meantime, uh, take care. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and uh, thanks for sharing some time with me in the deep. So, But cheers, guys. Have a good night. Bye, Howard. Bye.